Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I'm going to do today, I will talk about introduction to artificial intelligence today. Um, I was supposed to cover this episode last week, but unfortunately I got sick, um, so I was not able to do that. My apologies for that. Now, this is going to be a very uh, tiny uh, episode because I don't want to really get into very details about what AI is about, what machine learning is all about, what deep learning is all about, because this is a Salesforce basic artificial intelligence course, right? Um, so I'll try to do justice to this course. I'll try to explain you what AI is about. Now, let me let me take a step back, right? Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever felt like when you, when you talk to someone who, say, maybe a friend, maybe, you know, someone, a family member of yours who got nothing to do with, IT or technology, when you ask them what is AI, um, at least what I've experienced, the information, what I got, I'm going to share with you. The first thing they're going to say, hmm, artificial intelligence, isn't that something like you see in movies where uh, robots running around, you know, can take over when you drive, you know, want to, want to shoot at you, you know, can take over all of your jobs, you know, robots working in the restaurants, um, and every human being will be replaced by machines. Um, so, and people might have impression by seeing a Will Smith movie like I Robot, say, oh, that's what artificial intelligence is about. AI can become conscious, right? AI can become sentient. Um, this is, unfortunately, you know, I hate to break it to you, these all are sci-fi things, right? We don't have any such thing. Yes, sentient AI is the ultimate goal, but we haven't reached to that stage yet. Now, sentient AI is something with things like human beings. It can have consciousness. It can take decisions by itself. can learn from the environment and can make an informed decision, right? Um, to reach to that stage, we need to talk about ethics and compliance and a lot of other things, right? Uh, so if I put in a simple way, to a layman terms, what an artificial intelligence is about, it's enhancing the capability of a software to automate things which a human beings uh, don't want it to perform. Let me give you an example. You must be thinking, this guy is talking jargon, this guy is talking BS, right? Now, have you seen an email filter or your email uh, Outlook or uh, Thunderbolt or whatever email um, tool client you used it has a capability to filter the spam or junk email how do you think it's it's performing that there's some kind of intelligence that goes behind the scene who are build a client have put that intelligence behind the scene right can we call it as an artificial intelligence not really but it has intelligence so that's one way of intelligence that happens behind the scene um, that's your initial form of an intelligence built into your software which can automate your spam filter and other aspects of it, right? Now, it's not a full-fledged AI. I won't call it as a fancy AI. Let's talk about another example. Have you used um, Translator, Google Translator? You write in, say, English, wanted to translate to Hebrew, or translate into, say, Romanian, or translate into German. It does the job pretty accurately. I wouldn't say to, to the point, but how do you think? It's doing it. There is an artificial intelligence. There's a deep learning that goes behind the scene, which performs the stuff, right? So that's a, an application of artificial intelligence. Chat GPT, right? You give instruction and you respond you back. What is Chat GPT? It's 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 a it's it's a generative AI, right? It's another term that's been commonly used in 2023. Um, so that's an application of artificial intelligence. Uh, another example, which is highly used, heavily used, sorry, not highly, my apologies, uh, in medical field is a classification based. What is classification? You classify a problem into group, okay? Does this person has a cancer or does this person do not have a cancer, right? So you have certain set of data based on you know, cell cell structure or, or what now, right? I'm, I'm, don't quote me on this. Uh, I'm just trying to give you a very simple example. The radiologist will have all the information associated with the tumor and 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 they feed the data to the software and the software will decide, okay, based on the structure of the tumor, dimension, and all the characteristics, 
um, associated with cancer. Okay, I'll put this as a cancerous tumor or put this as a non-cancerous tumor, right? So uh, you categorizing into two groups, right? That's one of the application of artificial intelligence. This comes under machine learning, um, classification, linear regression, um, you know, the other algorithms, right? Which I don't want to get into it. And then we have the deep learning where neural network is heavily used, right? Which trying to mimic the, uh, the what the brain does. That's the concept of the artificial neural network is about. But this course is not about Python. This course is not about your tools you wanted to use to code. This course is about Salesforce. How do you use AI in the Salesforce, right? But if you're interested, I'll share with you some of the tools uh, and then what you can do with that, right? Okay. Now, um, you can also predict the share market price, you know, you know, going up and down. You can also predict um, um, other stuff, right? Using AI, that's one thing. And one common use case, which you would have used, I'm pretty sure, even if you're, even if you, uh, you have a, you know, 10 year old son, you would have used the weather prediction app, right? In your phone. How do you think um, the weather prediction app will know what tomorrow's weather will look like, let's say in Auckland or Wellington, or seven days weather in, say, Palmerston North, or let's say in Sydney or, or in Bucharest will look like. They used an AI modeling tool based on the data they collect, forecasting data and other, you know, climate data, and they predict what the weather will be like. That's a kind of artificial intelligence uh, used on, right? So that's one application. Right, and then we have robots. Um, there's, let me scroll down, right? And then we have robotic navigation, right? This project is very important to me um, because one of my mates, when I was doing my uni, uh, we were involved in robotic arm, right? He was an electrical engineer guy, um, pretty clever guy, Chris, um, and I was doing the code side of it, right? The robotic arm would be built, right? Pretty basic, right? Back in the days, you can lift up a coffee mug, you can move stuff around. Uh, that being said, right, we, we use the AI stuff there, uh, primitive form of an AI. Um, and now Japan uses it to perform medical surgery. There are a lot of applications with that. So there, now you must be thinking, oh, will the robots um, will take over the supermarket? Not the way you think it will. It might assist humans to automate a lot of things. Yes, on that perspective, it will. But it won't in, in the perspective, what do you think, right? Um, and then language processing, NLP, you know, uh, like I said, um, natural language is one of the, the most commonly used application. And it's very heavily used, right? Like I talked about uh, Generative AI, NLP is a part of generative AI, ChatGPT is a classic example, or Notion AI. If you've written blogs with the help of, you know, Notion AI will actually help you with a lot of things. Um, now, you must be wondering, right, that's all cool. What if I wanted to get into um, hands-on aspect of artificial intelligence? Well, there are a lot of tools out there you can do. First of all, if you really wanted to be an AI engineer, you got to learn machine learning. You got to learn uh, deep learning. You might say, oh, I don't want to learn it. It's too difficult. Then you can't be an AI engineer. There are lots of tools out there, but my sincere advice, please do not be a tool user. Be a real engineer. If you wanted to get into engineering side of it, get into the mathematics aspect of it. Without maths, of machine learning or deep learning without understanding how the core algorithm works, you will not have an, a better understanding of building a great model, right? Um, so that's my personal opinion. I mean, you can disagree. You might have different perspective. I do not like to be a tool user, right? Salesforce comes up with, you know, Einstein and other stuff, but I'm an old school, right? I like to get into the nitty gritty stuff of it, right? So if you wanted to get into nitty gritty stuff of it, I would recommend a few tools which you can learn. Uh, one is the PyTorch, right? Um, PyTorch you can use. It's by Facebook. It's an open source. In Google PyTorch, you can come here. Uh, you can go to the tutorials. You know, you can install the PyTorch. Obviously, you know, I use Ubuntu. You can install in Ubuntu. You can install in uh, Windows and Mac. Hopefully, I don't use Windows. Windows is shit. Sorry, my apologies. Um, so I use Windows for work because I have no choice. I mean, 
I asked them to give me a Mac or a Linux, but they gave me Windows. But it's a company policy, which is fine. I respect that. I, uh, I'm flexible. It's end of the day, just an operating system makes no difference. Um, so you can go here. You can do the basics. You can understand what tenses are um, and uh, what are data sets, data loaders, transform uh, transformers, build models. If you don't want this, right, you can also go to something called Fast AI. This is another place you can do. It's pretty cool. Um, you can go to docs.fast.ai. I mean, you can, it's, they built the library on top of uh, PyTorch. It makes it more simple. So you can go from here. You can, you can do from the tutorials. You can go from here and start reading it, right? Fast.ai, uh, docs.fast.ai. Or if you wanted to uh, get into the Google side of things, you can do the TensorFlow, right? Um, but the one thing I just wanted to tell you that TensorFlow is great, but a lot of research papers are written these days on PyTorch. I mean, I'm a PyTorch fan. I use PyTorch. I like PyTorch. Now, I use PyTorch. I built a um, climate change model for my climate change foundation I run. I'm a climate uh, activist, activist. Sorry, I can't pronounce it. Um, silly of me. Um, I run climate change foundation. So one of the main reasons why I went to Europe is to take my climate change model, well, meeting families is another reason, which obviously my partner will be offended if I say it's not the case. Um, meeting families is the first thing, right? And the second thing is to take my model to EU parliament. Uh, I met a few climate change ministers, they you know, showed them what I'm building, uh, got a few tips, I'm gonna improve it, we'll see how it goes, right? So that's the main thing Right, so I, I, I work heavily on artificial intelligence side. It's something I wanted to do. I run through foundation. Um, I like to do a lot of things, right? I'm working on my books as well. Um, and yeah, and people often ask me, where do you get so much of time? I manage my time very well. I sleep on time. I spend time with my family. I work out, you know, I travel when I wanted to travel. The things which I don't do, I don't waste my time chatting about things which is useless. I don't talk to people when it's not needed. I don't hang out with people which adds no value to my life. And I only hang out with my people who are close friends and family. So, you know, I make that distinction very, very clear because I value the time. I'm Jewish. For me, time matters more than money. So, so that's the way I run. Okay, sorry I digress, my apologies. My main intention was to show you guys extra stuff which you wanted to learn. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. Um, tomorrow, hopefully, tomorrow, because I'm putting with double codes, because last time I said tomorrow I'm going to cover this. I got sick for a damn week. It's funny, though, because I was in Europe for two months. I didn't get sick even for a single day. Came back home a week later, flat out sick. Far out, man. It just... Anyways, um, so I'm going to talk about, um, come on, uh, turn the data into models, right? That's my next tim episode tomorrow, like I said, in code, hopefully, if I'm not unwell. So that being said, hope you guys have an amazing evening. Adios.